You can't beat getting up. 5.30 in the morning in the summer after a night sleeping in the car. Had some fantastic fishing yesterday. But this morning I've got to get up early. I've got a brew going there. Have some cornflakes. <clears throat> get my voice back. And drive out of Somerset into another bit of Somerset. Down to see Craig. Get a hit. Bossing the beach. See if we can't catch a fish off the shore. Not just any old fish, smooth hounds. I can't believe I'm still sleeping in there at 70. Not full time, obviously. It's still cold even in the summer. People wonder why I do this. Do you know, I don't know why I do it, it's because I can. Even at my age, I still can do it, so I'm going to do it. And I've got a tent in there, I could pitch a tent up. A lot of the time, I'm warmer in the car, I don't get so cold, I've got a bed chair, and that's why I have an estate car, because I can slide a six foot bed in there, they blow up, support bed, you know, like a mattress thing, sleeping bag, 140 year old sleeping bag, I think it was last used by oh, one of the Victorian painters, I think it was. <laughs> I love it, me, I love it, you cannot beat roughing it, it's really good. And fingers crossed, I get to uh, enjoy a cup of tea at like half past five in the morning, and later on, I hope to show you guys, with Craig, maybe some fish and some tips. Cheers. Well, I'm down here on Bossing the Beach, Porlock Bay is way over there. I'm waiting for Craig to uh, turn up. I think he's gone in to uh, watch it to get some bait and stuff. I've got squid. And it's a long walk, so I thought I'd walk down anyway, but I just thought I'd show you here. Although well, it's an absolutely immense storm beach, any wind from this direction piles in here puts millions and millions of tons of shingle here. Well, apparently one, one year it cut through the whole beach here, actually cut a natural channel through here. As you can see, there's a stream coming in there. So this stream must find its way out underneath the shingle bank here. And just look at the height of the storm. That's the direction it must have come in, I guess. I don't know, maybe that's how they just bulldozed it. But this was originally where it came and you can sell well I'll show you how it comes over because <laughs> I guess it I don't know the storm pushed these all over there or was a flood from here pushed them in but I've been seeing some fish down here I don't know what they are whether they're mullet or what they are they're probably mullet but you'd never know it's just what we call shaking the water over there quite a deep pool there I think they're mullet but that's a natural stream and up over there, they look like they're smaller fish, but you've got to be careful with mullet because they make tiny little dimples and it could be a three pound, four pound fish. And possibly there might even be a wild brown trout up in there. I do not know, I do not know. I just thought that'd be interesting. That's quite deep there. So, we're aiming or hoping for, hey, you know me, I'm hoping for anything. Look at the height of the bank there. Look, look at it. It's just absolutely amazing. It's spectacular scenery here, as always. Well, it would be as always. It's not exactly moving, is it? So I might as well push on a little bit farther. I slept in the car last night, got about four hours sleep, if that fitful. 
working on another feature, fishing all day, driving from five in the morning, six in the morning, and then fishing till like nearly 10 o'clock at night. I've done it all, I said I wouldn't be doing it again, but you can't help it. it, depends if you're a keen fisherman or just a holiday fisherman. Unfortunately, I've been a bit ke too keen for too long. I can't stop. I'm gonna go down there by that piece of wood. There's, there's some marks Craig told me to look out for. It's really snaggy, you can lose loads of gear, so I expect to lose gear. Who knows? Let's get down there. Right, I've set up purely along here because I can sit on that. Somebody thoughtfully put it there. I'm going to be setting up here with the pulley rig. I'll put it back here, you can see it sliding, that's the principle of it. Here's, I've got a two hook panel which I don't normally fish, to be honest, on snaggy beaches. They're better for hooking fish, but they're also better for snagging up. You put your hook bend into this little clip there, bait holder. You cast out. When it impacts with the sea surface, that comes off. So you're fishing away like this. Then when you pull on the fish, this to wind it in, it slides the lead up there, like that. There you go. I'm sure you can see it moving. It slides up. That's the principle of it. I'm fairly sure, first cast, it'll end up in a snag. I've just got squid. Craig's going to come. You can see it there. Craig's going to be coming down probably. He'll have everything barred as kitchen sink. He'll have Craig will have the gourmet version. I've got the let's just get a bait in the water version. A little tip I do is I put my leader knot around here at the bottom of the spool and then I don't overlap it because I want it to clear itself if that makes sense. Sometimes if you have a leader knot like this up here it can snag on the way out. It's tip number one I haven't even got it in the water. I'm, I'm parked way up there, but you can see where I am for the height of the shingle bank because it's a flood tide. Maybe five minutes to get down here. No, it's known as a bit of a tackle graveyard. So the reason I want to get a bait in the water now, he says, is because hopefully I can cast far enough to get past the boulders and give it a good wang out. Uh, flooding, so it's going to be going that way. Let's send it a bit right. Well, it's far enough at the moment for fish. I'll tell you another problem I've had. I've noticed, once I've had, I've noticed that um, as I walk miles back up this steep bank, it gives you an idea of how steep it is. Fishing with braid, it's nice for casting, it's like 50, 60 pound braid, but it seems to snag in the boulders a lot. And you pull out, and as you pull out, you break off. I've noticed this quite a bit. So my other rod, which I normally fish with a standard braid straight through, I am actually going to, ah, oh, somebody's been fishing here. I guess, the crab. Oh, let's get up there first. I can feel that tide pulling already. What I'm going to do is put a mono lead on it. It seems more forgiving somehow. It's indeed pulling to the right. Make sure when you're fishing for smooth hands, you make sure there's some weight on your back end of the tripod in case you get a real bang over. You can see I've got quite a bit of tide cranking along there. Set up a bait in the water, and we're going to get the dogfish trophy. It'd be nice to get something different, like a ray, but I'll settle for dogfish at this stage. I've walked a long way. Right, let's get a mono leader on this other one. Right, what I've done, I've got the second rod out of, the tide's going this way, it's going left to right. So I've gone way up here and I've cast that way. So the grip lead hits here, then I let some line out, and the line comes around in a big arc up to the rod top. And that is the direction where the tide's pushing on the line, it's pulling the grips into the bottom. Or the snags. This one I cast straight out, and you might be able to see it's gone to the right, 
but I have had a bite on this. I have had like a, what I call a dogfish bite on that one. Uh, that could have bumped it down, but you know, if it's a smooth handle, I think I'd know a bit more about it. But this one is a stiffer rod, that's a softer rod. You see the difference in the two different uh, tip actions there. At least I'm out. Normally I, I do this. Craig hasn't turned up yet. Here's a bite, here's a bite, there's a bite, there's a bite. Missed him. I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna leave that out there. I think that was a dogfish. It looked a bit heavy for a dogfish. You never know. Normally I don't catch anything at all. Craig comes up, puts out really good bait, you know, combo bait, some peeler crab, he's got some spider peeler as well. And catches one straight away, I'll get the first fish. And I've already been in half an hour catching nothing. So I fully expect him to turn up. The wind is blowing, you might be able to hear it in the mic, it's easterly, so it's blowing behind me off. And this is a big bay here that curves around and I've got shelter from all these cliffs. They gave thunderstorms and rain for this afternoon. So I bought a big plastic bag for my cameras and I bought a brolly there. I'm happy to have that one bite as long as he's not pulled me in a snag. I dropped into the supermarket and watch it uh, just to get some grub because obviously I've done an overnight in the car and I fished all day yesterday anyway. So I've, I'm out of food and I'm looking at the prices of things. You know, I think it, it's really expensive what it is. And you go to other countries, you know what they have? They have bread, just bread. And I think, well, I want bulking out. That's all I want is bulking. So 40 pence this, or if this was in a sandwich, it would be about three pounds for a little bit of filling, you know? So I'm thinking survival, a dry keep batter, a bit chewy, but keep you alive. Mmm, fresh one too. One fish, even a dogfish, come on. Watch that rod top, I'm trying to keep this head cam still. It would be because I'm eating this. Still getting bites on this right hand one, guys, look. I dropped a little bit of slack back. I keep dead still, you might just be able to see it. Got to be a dogfish. I'm thinking there might be a dogfish on that, people. Because I've had that many bites on it. If he has got me in a snag, I might as well take a crack at it. Oh, I'm gonna crank like crazy to get it over the snags and the boulders. I don't want to get caught in anybody's line. That's why I'm staying high up on this beach to give me the highest elevation of lift I can. Come on, babe, in you come. Oh, it's all good exercise. No fish, but there were definitely bites. I wonder what they were. I wonder. Well, it's been well chewed, it could have been crabs. Some that's bit me off half the, half the squid. I think I, I, I might send that out as it is. A little bit of fresh wrap on it. A little freshen up. I'm normally pretty bad for freshening baits up, but I noticed that uh, the good anglers do it all the time. There was a fish, because look, I've missed something there. Storms come in, they did forecast a rainstorm over there. It's absolutely, it's just black and lashing down. I've built myself a camp here. <laughs> Am I going to keep bone dry 
behind some sticks. I have got the umbrella, I've got a plastic bag for the cameras. In the dim and distant past, I can see figures coming along the beach. I think this is Craig and he's got a, a client that he's guiding for. There's a fair old walk coming up here. If I pull back with the camera you can see exactly the distance required. Over in the distance there, not good news. Well, the rain has actually stopped and the rods are motionless. It must be getting pretty near high water. But for those who don't know, Craig is uh, Craig Butler's a shore guide. Does shore guiding to anybody down holiday down here if you want to go fishing, you need to know where to go, when to go, all that type of thing. Right state of tide, otherwise you're just wasting your time. And he's going to show us how to rig up um, one of his favourite baits, spider peeler, for shore fishing. As we always say, you can never have too many tips. Uh, one uh, very good bait, uh, which is very much overlooked uh, these days, is the, the spider peeler crab. Um, it, it is quite hard to get hold of, but with the glut of spider crabs around the UK coast, they've got a malt at some stage. And if you're lucky enough to, to get a stash of, of the spider peelers, uh, definitely worth squirreling away as many as you can in the, in the freezer. They work all year round. They freeze well, do they, Craig? Uh, they do, fantastic. These have been in the freezer, believe it or not, for over two years, and it's still good to go. Um, it's just slowly defrosting now. The, the actual body is still still defrosting, so we're not going to um, smash it to bits and just ruin the bait, so we're going to let him slowly defrost. Uh, but what I've done is uh, peeled the legs out. Uh, this is a, a hell of a bait, this is. Um, most people on, on even peeler crabs chuck the, chuck the crabs away, chuck, chuck the legs away. Absolutely such a waste of money. Um, you can get a real tidy good bait and it will catch loads of fish. Uh, this is basically a spider peeler crab. You could do this with uh, a normal shore peeler crab. Um, just get the leg, break up the sockets and just peel the shell away, relieving the, the fresh now, I fresh always have trouble getting that second bit. Sure, us how you do that, Great. Yeah, it's just... just get, Teasing it. Yeah, just tease it out. Don't be too 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 hard on it because it can snap. Just pull it away. And if the, if the crab are frozen down at the right stage, uh, it just makes life easy. Um, and then just pull out around the knuckle area is a little bit trickier just pull it out and there you go you've got to be a bit gentle so you don't break it so then you end up with the leg you know here i've peeled out most of the legs already and uh, i'll show you how to to get a, a nice sort of tidy little bait could you could you fish so single as well clay uh, you know you, if you, you if you're off a harbour wall for grass and yeah small pollock and yeah, stuff you could like do. that absolutely yeah you could do um i quite like to to sort of make a nice chunky bait you know we're fishing for, for smooth hounds here uh, so what I'm going to do is basically get the hook. I've got a panel hook here. Um, you don't need a panel hook, but I've just got it on the rig I'm using at the moment. What I do is get the get the crab for the for the open end here and just poke it in like you would a worm and slide it around the shank of the hook into that first section and leave it to dangle like that. Get the next leg. Go in there like so. Like that. Do you um, coming out in a joint there? Or yeah, just, just on the, on the first joint there. You can see, if you can see the leg, you've got one, yeah. two, three, four uh, joins there so I'll just do the first section and then and then what I do is when I've got two on there I'll just take this loose end and just put that through there like that just poke it straight through like that and push it up and then the next one double back itself through there and push that up like so and then he might be able to if you can see there just nip him in there if he's a long leg and put it up there, and that, that's that's two legs so far. You can see that's starting to take a bit of shape there. Chunking it up. Yeah. It? So next leg just copy exactly the same. So two legs, then fold, push it up, and then again another two legs. In there. So in that first section, leave them dangling, and get the next leg, push him in there, and as you go there, push that one up, and then take the that next the first one you put on there, and push that through 
Sort right. of overlap it really. Yeah, you, you that's get it. it it's just sort of threading it on like. And then just push it around there. I have to manipulate it a little bit around the hook here. Push it up, squish it up. It's quite they're quite firm, so you're not gonna rip them too much. And then you can just do that and then maybe like so. You know, and that's the it's quite a nice little bait there. You'd be having that with a piece, yeah. of, piece of meat off the crab, wouldn't exactly. you? Exactly. So, so yeah, that's like wasted. If, and even if you was to eat, you know, I don't know why people don't eat the spider crabs. See, that's not exactly a small. That's only a small spider crab, and that's four legs. And that's a good mouthful. That is. So even for human consumption, if you go down Chesil Beach or out on the south coast and you catch plagues of them, just take them home and eat them. It's really good eating. But yeah, that's it. You know, um, maybe if you want to put a little bit of elastic on there, um, a bit of fine bait elastic. It's been threaded on quite a few yeah, times. It's not, by the it, hook, it, so it shouldn't come on. Shouldn't come off in the cast. But you know, I'm going to put a little bit of elastic here. On there, it's not much at all. Look, that's hardly anything on there. Just pull them off. And that's it. Good to go. Yeah, what would you good. do? You, you, so you wouldn't even need a second hook on that. Wouldn't need a second hook. You know, that's that's. They've only got. I've only got like a three o, uh, cox and rule upside surf here. Um, that's good enough on its own. Um, but I've got, you know, I quite like to use a penal rig, especially when I'm smooth hounding. Bottom hook to hold the bait on. See, there's not, you know, the the, the hook part is, is a bit masked there. Um, but generally, the top hook, you just use it like that, just hooking through there. Pull that bit of shrink tubing down. Like so. Just keeps it nice and neat. Pull that down. Just a nice oh, little see, bait. So you actually put the shrink tube in below the hook. Yeah. You know, over so the eye. That's it, yeah. And then that you can almost it's almost like a herring isn't it the, the bottom hook to hold the bait on like you yeah. can't fish in you know your bottom hook's just to hold that on and that's your hooker there and this bit is just oh, you know if you hook on that as a bonus but that's it's usually the top hook you hook on most times but yeah it's a good to go bait that is and you know pretty much that's four legs off a spider crab so you're, you're talking a bonus bait four bonus four bait. baits off the legs and a, a crab of this size six baits so you're talking 10 baits for a crab. No, that's... Not bad, is it? It's good. And Even I think that's good value for yeah, the money. Yeah, hell, it's good value. It's good. Well, crate on. It's pretty adamant that they were bull husks that he lost and I lost early on. There he is. Spur dog. No, smooth out. What was that on, Craig? Uh, it was on a, a, a raw uh, prawn and a bit oh, of squid. Oh yeah, combo bait. Yeah. You and your combo baits. Yeah. We well, are gathered by the attire people that it's sort of well, it's not rain stop play. It's rain screwing it right up. Fortunately, I had the foresight to bring an umbrella with me, but um, Craig and the other another angler, there were two anglers down there are getting drenched. I've got a plastic bag which I always bring a bin line to put the cameras in. As so we can get caught out on the beach, it's pretty horrible. In fairness, it's what they fo focused on today. They said it would be thunderstorms coming in, possible local heavy, heavy rain. Sea's lovely and flat. The bites have gone off a little bit. Lost two hounds now, two smooth hounds, one more in. I lost a set of gear as well. And the umbrella looks like it's about to expire. And the wind is coming up. I think I've just lost one smooth there and I might have another one, guys. Why is a fish on there? I don't know, if, yeah, that's a hound. That's a hound. Please don't come off this time. Please, please, please just give me a freaking break for once. God. I don't even know if the camera's on. Oh, I don't get in the snakes. He's, oh, he's out. He's in, he was in. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop whining man. Just keep him moving. He's coming. He's close. Oh no, he's... Uh, just one fish. Just one smooth. It's not much to answer. 
All the blank trips I've suffered. Wind in the face. Cold tea in the flask. Oh yeah, that's a hound. Oh, it's kicking. It's kicking. He's there. Please, just come in on the wave. Right. Might be a bull ass. It's a bull ass. I thought it was a hound. It's a bull ass, isn't it, Craig? Yeah. Oh, dear. Yeah, you lost one just now, didn't you, Craig? Yeah, it's Doug. Wow, look at that. that. Did it drop the bait halfway in? You were just saying that's two in a row. Yeah. I'll tell you what, big fish off the shore though, aren't they? They're nice fish. Yeah, not bad, are they? Oh, yeah. Angry. From a beach, guys, I've had bigger ones off the of rocks, you know, island of Cornwall. That's my, I think that's a PB off the beach, that one. What a cracker. Just jaw hooked there. What a change to actually catch something off the beach early on! <laughs> oh, what? I'm pretty made up with that, guys. Rain or no rain. Now, make sure I don't get tangled with the cast. I think every tip's down now. I'm just going to cast this one out, and I thought I saw the, uh, the tip go. <sighs> That's far enough, I think. So you get pushed back up by the tide, but they're, they're small, neap tides, so they're not too bad. The ground cover, which thank goodness for me, is uh, not too bad. Wow, well pleased with that. Big fish last night, sleeping in the car, put the time in. Well happy. Well knackered as well. Wouldn't think of my age. You still get excited over fish like that, but happy to say I do. Wow, what a hound. go guys here is another dogfish and there is the bait he took the squid's going a bit pink now when it goes pink it's not the well I say it's not the greatest bait well I say it's not the it's not the greatest bait but um, when it's pink it's starting to sort of go off I guess let's get this guy back and uh, see if we can't get bait out again I'm getting low on squid well, time to turn, guys, and uh, I've got bites on both rods. See if I can get down for the doggy here, dogfish. I thought they might be small corner strap eels, but here he comes. It's a doggy. There we go. So maybe now that tide's moving. They could be uh, more fish on the move. Uh, just got a, a spider peel, a bit of a spider bait here. Uh, it's about six of, of, of a piece of the, the main body. As you can see, it's, it's, there. it's quite a juicy bait. There's a lot of yellow goo in there and it's, it's all the scent. I've got a, a little a leg here just to patch it up to stop all the scent dispersing on the impact with the, when it hits the impact on the sea. Uh, I'm use, using a pulley rig here. I've got a fairly, fairly long one uh, today. And uh, I'm going to clip it down with a, a Gemini splashdown uh, clip. So these are quite nifty little contraptions. You can, uh, you've got when you pull it, you've got the, to set it, push it up in the up position, and then put your hook in there and pull this disc down. Locks it in place nicely. Uh, ideal for the off off the ground cast. Um, and it, I've never ever seen it seen one, you know, a release in midair. So. And what do they call those, Craig? Uh, it's Gemini splashdown. Is that yeah, a relatively yeah. new one? They've been around a few years now. Yeah. Um, they're about 
two two fifty for a pack of five. So they're fairly expensive, to be fair. You don't really want to be using them in snaggy areas where you're gonna yeah. where you're gonna lose plenty of them. So, but yeah, they're, they're really good. And uh, when it hits the hits the sea, hits the surface of the sea, that little disc comes up like so and releases the oh, bait yeah. like so. So swings free. Quite nifty, really, to be fair. I don't use them that often, but now and again. Who are these uh, people that sit there with nothing to do making these? The ideas out. Oh, Other no, fishermen. It's incredible, isn't it? Yeah. I wish I wish I could think of something nifty like that and make a few pennies out of it. Yeah, so absolutely. One simple. day, you never know, I might have a brainwave in the middle of the night. Not when we're fishing, so. we don't have much brainwave <laughs> fishing. Getting the baits in the waters is what yeah. it's all about. Yeah, right, let's get this bait out there and see if we can get one. This, the chap just next to us is just there. Uh, he had a hound, didn't he? Just yeah. had a smooth hound, so hopefully we're going to start with a tide on the ebb now, so hopefully we'll get one or two come in. Another good tip here at Bossington uh, I found over the years is uh, while you're fishing for smooth hounds, it's quite quite tricky to fish two rods for them. Uh, quite often you could have one rod going with a smooth hound on, you're reeling it and the other rod goes, and they tangle up and it, it's, it can be a complete nightmare. Uh, so what I favour to do is, uh, is, is to fish a second rod with a whole squid uh, within 10 metres of the shore um, or the water's edge. Uh, while the tide's flooding in, you pick up quite a few bass here. You know, many school bass, two to three pound, but always a chance of a bonus four or five pounder as well. What's that orange line? I haven't seen you that before. Is that the nearest um, one? What's it called? High Seas. I got it from Cox and Roll. Uh, I think there's only I think there's only one retailer, Jerry's of Morecambe, selling it. I think, um, which is quite surprising. It's a fantastic line, but it's it's twenty pound. No, it's 15 pounds, but it's 0 0.40. And that's fine, is it? Yeah. Still there. I think I chanced it. Squid on your scale? Yeah, no, I'm wasting that time. Oh, he might be there. He's a doggy here. Um, is uh, there sand out there at all off this beach? Uh, I've never seen it, if there is. So we, our think, baits are on this stuff, small, small fish, boulders. Our baits even 100 yards out of Yeah, it could be on like, sort of, I've never seen it right out, because it just, don't, I've seen it on the big tide at low water, and it's just more of this. But it flattens off, and I'm sure it just gradually goes away, and there's these boulders which are covered in like red wispy weed, and oh, really, yeah. must be patches of, patches of sand, must be patches of... I don't understand why it doesn't get covered in silt out there, do you know what I mean, the boulders? I think it's a tide, it's such a strong tide that I think it, there must be patches of clean sand and there's a lot of sand around the corner. Yes, another dog. Another dog fish. <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's got pretty quiet, more dog fish. So uh, we're going to have a winding crazy. We're going to go to a place way over there in the distance, Porlock Bay. And that's a low tide mark. So I'm going to see if we can pick a fish up there. It's gone very, very quiet here. Right, load up and ship out. Okay, we're on a bigger boulder strewn beach. Pull up where it's called. If I turn it around slowly, a beautiful, there's like oak tree covered hillsides there. Big, big boulders, much bigger boulders here. It's a sort of different type of tidal situation here. And we were, Really, you probably won't be able to hear it now. We were way. This is a trouble with big boulders, you can easily go over and do an ankle. We were just from the headland, about half a mile in from there. So you can see it's a great big cut in bay here. Uh, previously fished up here at high water. I think it's dogfish, it might just be dogfish now. In fact, dogfish would be nice, be something. At least we know there's fish out there. And this is falling. So the tide over there, we fished a little bit of you know, flood tide coming up and then the rest of it was falling. And now we come right round the bay this side to fish this at the bottom of the tide here. Gonna give it a couple of hours, nothing longer. I'm just fishing squid out there, the same squid I wound in to be honest, because it's fairly fresh. Clay's down here and, uh, well, what can I say? If we get another fish, it just sort of round the trip off. People to see this and go, bloody hell, there's nothing. Graham's always moaning about his feet. Look at the way that he's gone down there. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to the snaggy point, are they? Yeah. Help, man. Can't be good in 
Yeah, I'm gonna bite on this one up here, guys. There he is, watch, watch, watch. Look, he's dead still. There's the, you might be able to see the bite. This is gonna be, we're down to the last minute or so. I think it might be a dogfish. I'm gonna take a gamble. It's either a snake or a dogfish. I'm falling over now, I'm so tired. It's a fish. I won't keep him coming off the rocks. I'd say it must be a dogfish. Come on, let's just go out with one fish. Oh, I feel him bumping and banging through the rocks and boulders. Are we going to come out of this with? About dogfish number five. <laughs> Small ray would be nice, but I got my money on a dogfish. I put as long a cast out as I could uh, possibly get. It's a dog, he was at a small cong. Let's have a little looky. What is that? Could be a doggy. It's a doggy. Well, at least we didn't, didn't blank on this one. Get another doggy. Not a buller, so I think it's probably time for the long drive home. Hopefully one hook. There's one. Of course, I put the, the pliers back. <laughs> oh, that like red, red weed on it as well, isn't it? Yeah, that filamentous stuff. Yeah. There was lots of shrimps and prawns. Oh, he's got a weird mark there, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> Quite like a skin graft, isn't it? Isn't that? Yeah, yeah, he's just dribbled all the way up my sleeve. Oh, let's get him back. Well, one last cast, folks. This is a, probably a, a snap off. That's plenty far enough to catch a fish, I know. There's people in Wales uh, picking their tea teacups off off the table at the moment with the vibration of the impact from that. So, 10 minute warning people. My feet are giving it a 10 minute warning. Sun's out. It's just nice to be out there. Doggy! See you next time guys and hopefully some more fish.